seems like everywhere Paul went, uh, people seem to get a little upset with him. Notice that when you're in the book of Acts, and they even stoned him one time, chased him out, put him in jail, beat him. And he just had that, uh, that way of just getting people upset. I'm going to pick up a story here in Acts chapter 19. This is in Ephesus. That we're going to be telling the story here. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of, two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great commotion. Oh, there it is again. Not just a little fighting. What's a commotion? A great commotion, turmoil, hostility, a fuss about the way. What was the way? Jesus' way, Christianity, I heard it, the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines for Diana, okay, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. So they were selling little idols. And what's it mean, uh, no small profit? What's the opposite of no small? Large. These guys were rolling in the dough. They were making the money. They were craftsmen for the shrine of Diana. Must have had their kiosk or little tents out there around that building. And here's a, I just pulled this off. Artemis is the same as Diana. This was just on the web. Uh, so I pulled it off just as a sample of Diana. And that, her temple was one of the ancient seven wonders of the world. It must have been a fantastic place. Now, Diana, well, uh, Diana was a fertility god. A statue of a young woman with 20 or more breasts. So that was Diana. And also inside that temple, there was Diana, but they also had a sacred rock that they found, a sacred rock. And in verse 35, we learn about it. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is a temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? So apparently a meteorite hit. Oh, that's from Zeus. It's a holy, sacred thing. So what did they do? They brought that in the temple and were worshiping that rock too. Now we'll pick up our story again. So this Demetrius, looking out, realizing Paul's talking about idolatry, maybe as he's keeping his books, he's seeing a little few less sales every day. So he called them together, the workmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. So what's on his mind about Paul and the idol worship? Yeah, making money. This is our livelihood. For what you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, so what is he really worried about? His trade. His trade. Making money. Selling little images. But also the temple of the great, God, great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. This story here has allusions to end day events in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. Because you get to Revelation, chapter 18, and the merchants of the earth are doing something when Babylon falls. That woman, Babylon, that the world is worshiping in the last day, they're wailing at the fall and weeping. Here's the verse. The merchants of these things, the things they're selling, and if you go earlier in chapter 18, the merchants of these things who became rich by her 
while stand at a distance for fear of her, torment, weeping, and wailing. So we see that the merchants of the earth and the things they're selling, gold, cinnamon, horses, flour, perfumes, cattle, all kinds of things, they're weeping. So why are the merchants of the earth weeping and wailing? Because Babylon is falling. And that's what Demetrius was afraid with Diana. That when Diana went down, Diana worship went down, what happened to his, you know what this means? Little cash, moolah, money. So the merchants of the earth, when Babylon go, goes down. And I think the mark of the beast will be so effective because the merchants of the earth will be right in there to cut us off. There won't be any black markets. We're going to be cut off. Let's take a look here in Revelation chapter 13. And I saw another beast. This is the second beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so even to make fire come down from heaven on the earth on the side of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs he has granted to do in the sight of the beast. Ten of those who dwell on the earth to make a what? An image. So we're talking image again, an idol, an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So we're seeing here the image in the end of time would be in Diana and what happened in Ephesus is actually an illusion. It was going to be played out in our day that when we at the end of time are saying, that's breaking the second commandment. You can't worship that. That's nothing at all that you have set up. There's only one God. He is to be worshiped. And the laws you are passing are unjust. And we don't need to worship those things. So we're going to see the merchants of the earth. We're going to see the governments of the earth. And really the whole earth is going to be uh, worshiping that image. And when we start saying, no, 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 there's going to be a great commotion globally, not just in one city. We're going to cause a, a commotion worldwide when the loud cry goes out. And we speak against idolatry and false worship in the last days. Now back to Ephesus here, chapter 19, verse 28. Now when they heard this, what Demetrius was saying about our trade diminished, Diana, she may be despised. They cried out, saying, great is Diana the Ephesians. So they cried. It's crying out. Is that something kind of low? That's a lot of noise. That is a lot of noise. And in the book of Revelation, the world will be crying for Babylon the Great when it goes down. Acts chapter 19, verse 29. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius, and I can't say that last name, Articasus, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. So they they wanted to hold accountable those troublemakers. But it said the city was filled with confusion. The complete word study dictionary says that word confusion is, is to pour together, to confound by mixing, confusion, tumult, uproar. Robinson Word Picture says to pour together like a flood. And I think he does that because it says here there was confusion and they rushed. It must have been like Everybody angry, and they're just melding together, and they have one thing. No, we want that idol. We want Diana. We want, this is our city. And what are they doing? They're angry and in commotion, and they're confused, and they're rushing in like a flood into, that, into the theater. So Roberts and Word Pictures, I like that. Pour together like a flood. What would happen to anybody who stood up in front of a flood like that? They'd be trampled. These people were serious idol worshipers. And even though Paul was right, they didn't want anything to do with it because they loved their money. They loved the prestige of their temple and their city more than they loved God. Acts chapter 19, verses 34. 
and 35A. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about how many hours? Do you think they'd go hoarse after a while? Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now, some of us went to public school Friday night, the big old football game. You'll see the rivalry of the team across. So what do they do in the afternoon? They have, a, they have an assembly and they have a pep rally. I've been to pep rallies because I went to public school. And everybody's cheering for their team. And I mean, this is a two-hour pep rally for Diana. These people, they really did not like what Paul was doing. And great is Diana Ephesians. We say great is what ours was West High School, the Blue Knights. So we say great is the Blue Knights. They're going to win tonight. And what are they saying? Great is Diana the Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana, and from the image which fell down from Zeus. So I have the keepers of the kingdom. That's us. These people were the, what? Keepers of the temple of Diana. That is a counterfeit for God's true religion. We, with the book that we have and the God we serve, we're the ones who are the guardians of his kingdom. That's our role on this planet. That's why we were put here, to increase God's kingdom. That's why you were born. You were born to increase God's kingdom in any way you can, with the ability you have. So they were worshiping the goddess Diana, a fertility god, in a rock, an image that fell down from Zeus. The New Revised Standard and the Vines Expository Dictionary for Temple Keeper says, in the profane Greek of one who has charge of a temple. So the Ephesians were the protectors and guardians of Diana worship. We got to protect that. And the whole world worships her, they said. I don't know if that was kind of an overstep or not, but I, that uh, city sure did. And that meant a lot for them because it meant their livelihood. It meant their way of life. It meant their culture. It's what their worship was. That's what they were familiar with. So then he continues on. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing r rashly. So he saw what was going on with the, with the commotion and the confusion. Wow, this is really rash. So he's trying to, what he's doing, he's trying to quiet them down. So promoting Diana, Diana worship gave the Ephesians a sense of worth and purpose. They were, they were the keepers of that goddess Diana, the protectors of the Holy Stone. Next, they felt strongly they had the truth and were willing to stand up and fight for what they believed. So that's what they were doing. Wait a minute, we're not taking this stand and sitting down what Paul's doing. No way. We're, we're coming against them. We're, we're not having anything to do with this. We like our way of life. We like how we worship. We like the income. We like our beautiful city. We love this beautiful temple. We don't want to change. Matter of fact, this is pretty good life. Well, if you're in a good life, but not in God's way, it doesn't profit you anything. What does a, a man gain if he, what? Gains the whole world and loses his soul. So they felt strongly that the truth, they're willing to stand up and fight for what they believed. Are we willing to stand up and fight for what we believe? I'm not necessarily saying physical fighting just to take a stand. So why were they defending their way of life in their God? Because their future depended upon it. Because what happened if Diana worship was no longer worshiped? What would happen to their great city and the great temple? They would lose their livelihood. So their faith was being threatened and they were gonna defend their way of life. Diana worship was a counterfeit for the worship of the true God. That's what it was. Diana had a beautiful temple to dwell in. Also, when that temple was a sacred or holy stone. But don't we have a temple where our God dwells? Oh, yes. Yeah, Satan knows about that. He knows how to set up all kinds of counterfeits on this earth. Yeah, we have a, we have a, 
a God's a living God, a God of life, not a counterfeit fertility God. Our God is a God of life. And in the temple where our God dwells, aren't there uh, holy stones in that temple? What's, what's standing, what's on that right there? The law. Are those holy stones? Yes. Not coming down as a meteorite. Written by what? The finger of a holy God giving the precepts, the, the laws of his kingdom that we are living by now, preparing us for the real kingdom that's coming. So we have holy stones too. Are we the guardians of those stones up in heaven? Yes, we are. We are. Those two tables of the Ten Commandments. So the people of Ephesus were the temple servants of Diana. They were guardians and promoted Diana worship. But what about us? Are we willing to be the guardians of the worship of the God of heaven on this planet? Are we going to be asleep at our post? Are we going to be AWOL from our duty? How, well, how does this apply to us? Well, we have our marching orders. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. So the patience of the saints, and it takes patience to live on this planet. It takes patience to be a servant of God and live his lifestyle because we have to push through because the society, the culture is opposite. So not only do we have the patience of the saints, we also what? Keep the commandments of God. The holy stones. We're protecting those stones, and we have the faith, not of Diana, but of who? Jesus. Of Jesus. That word keep here, who keep the commandments of God, we don't understand the depth of that word. Are you ready for this? No one has a hat on, so I can say, hold on to your hats. The complete word study dictionary says, keep. A warden, guard, to keep an eye on, watch, and hence to guard, keep, obey. So that word keep isn't just to obey it by itself. It has the intention of, of being, being a guard. We're guardians. We're keeping an eye on it. We're watching it. Why? Because we don't want any harm to come to that law. What, what's Satan trying to do? He's trying to nudge that law out every chance he has. But we are to guard the law of God. The Bonds Expository Dictionary says here, uh, denotes to watch over, preserve, keep, watch. So we have the same call to the God in the temple of heaven, the sanctuary in heaven. The Savior's there. The Father's there. The holy stones are there. And what are we? We are the representatives on this earth to keep that truth alive and to present it to this world. That's the marching orders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In England, they have a group who are the keepers of the crown jewels. The guards watch over St. Edward's crown and the British Imperial State crown. These guardians are responsible to make sure no loss or damage comes to the royal treasures of England. What about us? Are we guarding the treasure God has given us as diligently as they're guarding, guarding gold crowns with jewels on it? We have something way more valuable than those crowns in England. We have the truth of God. What about us? If you love me, you will keep my what? Commandments. That's the same word to keep the commandments in Revelation. So, a game warden, a guard, to keep an eye on. Hence, to guard, to keep, to obey. So when he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, it's just not obeying it. It's to keep it from harm. It's to be, keep it from being diminished, moved, pushed out. But to keep it where it belongs, central to the life that we live and those around us. So when he's saying, keep my commandments, he's actually calling you into ministry. He's giving you a job. You have a job. 
And that job is to protect what God has given on this planet. God's law is light. It's light. God's law is truth. I shall walk at liberty, for I keep thy precepts. It brings liberty. So we are those people that God has entrusted, called us to be keepers. Do we have the same passion to protect God's law, which is a true and living God, with a true reward, as the people of Ephesus was, for a female deity with 20 breasts and a meteorite? Who has more substance? Who has more reason to hold on to what we have? Because ours is real. Ours is real. It's not a golden image or a stone image. It's a real being. He hears. He speaks. He moves. He talks. He's a living God. We have a living God with a living law. So being the guardians of the laws and faith of Jesus gives the Seventh-day Adventist Church a reason for existence. We are the protectors of God's word and God's law. Psalm 84.10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the what? The house of God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. So we, in God's courts, God's house, that's what we're concerned about because someday we're going to be living there. And by our work on this earth, others will join with us. So we are the doorkeepers to invite people in. Enter in. All who want to come, he says, enter in. So Jesus reminds us of something. Remember, therefore, how, how you have received and heard. What's the next word? Hold fast. Let's say two words. And repent. So whatever we received and heard, that's the gospel. That is the truth that unlocks the kingdom of God. That's what we have heard. We've heard the voice of Jesus speaking. And what does Jesus say? Hold fast. And then when that word reproves you, repent. So what does it mean to hold fast? Don't let go. That's right. Don't let it slip out of your hands. I used to work in kindergarten during camp meeting. I don't know how many years I worked in kindergarten, at least 20 years. So I used to say, I'm in kindergarten because the kids and I can see eye to eye. So, <laughs> yes, I did say that. <laughs> but sometimes we'd go outside and we'd play. So somebody got a rope. And so, yeah, six on this side, six on that side. Put a little line here. Okay, now you pull when we say pull. So ready, set, go, pull. So what, this side was winning, but the last couple slipped. And they fell and they let go of the rope. Now it's six against four. So what happened to these people? They're getting pulled over. And those two are just laying down. And I'm yelling, get up, get up off the rope. And they didn't get up and their team lost. Because they lost hold, they didn't hold on. And they could have grabbed it. They were a stronger team. Those two would have got up and started pulling. They could have pulled their people back. But they didn't hold on. What about us? We've got to hold on. This planet is a rough ride. Hold on. Hold on for Jesus. Martin Luther, when Luther was called before the Diet of Worms and his enemies demanded that he recant his writings, the reformer boldly declared, unless I am convinced by scripture or by right reason, for I trust neither in popes nor in councils, since they have often erred and contradicted themselves. Unless I am convinced, I am bound by the text of my Bible. My conscience is captive to what? The word of God. I neither can nor will recant anything, since it is, not, it is neither right nor safe to act against conscience. Here I stand, I can do no other God, help me. Amen. Luther didn't let go, did he? 
He didn't let go. God raised him up to be a guardian of the faith of Jesus. Did he understand everything? No, but he understood exactly what he needed to know for that time, and he held on to it. Luther would not, he could not let go of the faith once delivered to the saints. Some of us need to grab that rope. Now's the time to join the ranks of the keepers and the guardians of God's commandments in the faith of Jesus. And those of us who are holding on, don't let go. He that endures till the end, the same shall be saved. So you've got to hold on because the devil's always trying to make you lose your grip. Those of us who are holding on, don't let go. And if you have let go, get up! Oh, grab the rope! Grab the rope! We need you to pull so we can win. We need you. All hands on deck. Because if you don't grab the rope, and if you don't resist Satan, then you're being pulled onto the wrong side. I don't want to be on the wrong side. During Sabbath school, someone said, Thomas said, don't, doesn't everybody want to be on the winning side? Do you remember my answer? Yeah, I always want to be on the winning side. Yes. And there are times I've played where I've let other people win just so they could have fun. You know, you, know you can really, you know, it's, it's just to let them win. But that's a game. But in this one, we can't let anybody else win. We need to win in the spiritual warfare we're in. We are in a spiritual war. The devil is wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So if you don't want to be on the wrong side of the line, get on with Jesus. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to where every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. So this world is our mission field. Saying with a mega voice, a megaphone. Okay, those of you who went to public school at pep rallies, the cheerleaders had these little things. What, what, what did they call them? Megaphones, yeah. And what did it do to their voice? Increase it. No, I don't know, maybe Adventists had them in their schools too. I don't know. I didn't go to Adventist school uh, except for uh, college. So, yeah. With a mega voice, really loud. Fear God. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. So why are we willing to proclaim a loud cry for our God? Because we love him. And he loves us. And he has a future for us. We have an inheritance that fades not away. Reserved in heaven. Some people are counting on inheritance. And somehow it just gets spent. Oh, gone. Our inheritance is secure. No one's going to steal it. So we are the guardians of God's commandments. The reason we were born is to promote and increase his kingdom. We are the defenders of the heavenly sanctuary truth in the law of God. So that's our purpose as a church. So today my plea is that we realize the privilege we have to be God's representatives. You're the apple of his eye. You are special to him. He wants you to be with him, working. We're, we're, we're workers together with God. As father and children, that's the business. All of us together promoting to grow the kingdom. And are you willing to join in and do what you can do? My plea is that you will say yes and pray that God would guide you in a ministry, a work that is suitable for you to, to perform and to be faithful in the vineyard and area that you were working. Because you were there for a purpose. That job you were working at, the family you're in, the neighborhood, the club that you may have a group that you hang out with, where you do your business, those people. 
near your mission field. Ask God to give you the ways to reach them, to minister them, because we're trying to pull them out of Diana worship, Sunday worship. We're trying to pull them where? Into God's kingdom with Sabbath worship, where there is a, four, what is it? The hour of judgment has come and worship him who made heaven, earth, the sea, fountains of water, to the worship of the true God. And someday in heaven, somebody may walk up to you and say, thank you so much for reaching out to me because I was lost, but now I am found. And because you shared with me, Jesus saved me, and now I'm here on these streets of gold with you.